Hey everybody, this is Jake from Jake of All Trades, and today we're going to talk about worm composting. Well, today we're going to talk about poop. Now, you may be thinking, what do you mean we're going to talk about poop? No, we're going to be talking about worm poo. Well, you can actually call it worm poo. It's called worm castings, and the technical name for this is vermicomposting. And vermicomposting is basically material that's broken down by worms uh, from fruit. Well, actually, it's not actually the fruit. The enzymes that break down the food, the worms eat, the worms turn, digest it, and then turn that into basically what was called black gold uh, for your plants. And it's perfect fertilizer for uh, any of your vegetables or plants or garden or anything like that. You can also make uh, worm tea from it as a, a liquid fertilizer as well. And so this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. So I learned about vermicomposting about four years ago. And it looked really cool where you got worms that are breaking down the material and doing different things. And I really wanted to try it out. So I finally went down and bought some worms uh, a couple days ago. Um, I got some Rubbermaid totes here from my local hardware store down at Home Depot and uh, decided to give it a try. Did some homework here, um, some research and different videos and different things that are written from different either uh, websites on vermicomposting or uh, groups that do vermicomposting. So, and the other thing I didn't like was when I went to kind of look to kind of figure this out, there's a lot of different opinions. Um, as I watch different videos, there's people just saying, hey, just throw all your trash in here. They'll eat it to start. And that really didn't make a lot of sense. So I've tried to do my homework here and uh, do my best to make these videos. So uh, what you're watching will hopefully work for you as well. And so uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I've got two bins here. One is going to be for the uh, leachate to go down in. That's all the, the water and stuff as it goes down through this to come down and drain into this. So we're going to leave this one alone. But in this one, I'm using a quarter inch bit. And uh, for the top here, we're just going to drill some holes in the top. help with ventilation. good something like that um, later on if you want we can even put some around the top here because as this sits in this one this is going to sit up a little bit like this uh, so I get some room for the liquid to sit down in here won't be touching and allow air to get in through the bottom as well so I might put some in here a little bit later but that should be good uh, for right now the other thing we want to do I'm going to do here is inside of here uh, I'm going to drill some holes just in this area and around this area because this, this part is is raised slightly and so is this. So I'm just going to put some holes in here. We don't need a lot, just a few. That should do it right there. Okay, so now we got a hole drilled. Uh, this, this should be ready to go. So now we're gonna make our bedding real quick, and I'll show you how we're gonna do that. So, okay, so for our bedding, we need about six inches of material, and uh, this is what basically the worms are gonna live in. And so, what I've been watching or what I've been uh, researching is uh, primarily that's gonna consist of. Uh, newspaper here. What I did was put old newspaper through a shutter. Also, brown paper like uh, we have Trader Joe's, right? We can take some Trader Joe's bags you don't use, put those through a shutter as well. So I'm going to mix that in. And then I've heard a lot of good things about coir, which is uh, coconut husks. 
also with um, peat moss. And this gardening mix, uh, its main contents are coir and, and peat moss. So this is gonna work really well too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take about a third, third of this uh, fine soil in my bucket. Because again, I wanna cover, I wanna cover this about six inches. So that's pretty that's really good. And then I'm gonna use, well actually probably this whole bag here. And if I have extra, I'm not gonna worry about it. It's better to have more than not enough. So now our bucket is about half full here. And then I'm just gonna take that remainder and with newspaper and put that in. Okay. Now one thing also that was recommended, I almost forgot to mention this, were eggshells. So I've just got some eggshells that I've ground up here pretty fine. It doesn't need to be super fine, but I'm gonna take about, for this mix, probably about a handful, half a cup. Half a cup will work really well. So I'm just gonna sprinkle those in as well. A little bit more. And that's probably pretty good. And now if you've got like a paint mixer, um, that will work well. Mom. With this, but you know what I did? I just poured. This is about a three quarters of a liter of water here. So now I've got this. I'm gonna mix this all up. I'm thinking I'm gonna need more water. So just mix it real good. And the goal with this again is you want you want it wet, like a sponge, um, but not. Not so much that you can wring out the water, but you want the consistency of, of a sponge that's nice and moist after you've wrung it out. So I'm just going to so you can see here. I'll just mix this up real good. this. It's a little still, it's damp, but it's not as wet as I would, as I would like it. So I'm going to add just a little bit more water to this. play with this a little bit kind of to get the right consistency and you can kind of feel when you squeeze this how damp it is you can kind of feel the moisture in there just make sure you mix it nice and good See how much this condensed. So, you can see how much this condensed in here. It was up to here. Once we added the water, it went down about half, half that. So we're about, we're about a little less than half. We're about halfway in this bucket, which is just about right for our tote here. So let's just put this down here. This is about, that's about three inches. It's about three inches right there of material in here. I'm probably actually gonna mix up a little bit more 
and put it in. It won't hurt. Um, but this is good to start. So let's get our worms. So here's the pound of worms we bought the other day. Comes in back here and uh, show you what this looks like. Kind of see that it's newspaper in here. They're in there. So let's just sprinkle these in. And I'm not going to worry about them going down through the holes there. They like to live, honestly, they like to live at the top of the surface of whatever they're in. up here and they are on top and you'll see them going down they're looking pretty good so put those in put those in there and uh, let's go get some food so I've got just some old strawberry tops here in the stems so I'm just gonna take that put this on top I'm gonna take a little bit of this Actually, just a dry material, the matter just to kind of keep the the fruit flies and stuff like that from getting in here. Let's put that right on top. Because eventually, these worms are going to eat this bedding too, long term. But that will be that will be fine. And uh, let's put our top on. And that is the beginning of our worm bin. So this is just going to live in this tote right here, and this one will catch all the uh, all the liquid coming down once that starts happening. If it starts happening, and we can use this for uh, for fertilization too. We just have to dilute it about one part of. It's not really worm tea. But with all the liquid that comes down here to 10 parts of water, we can even use that in our garden. So I'm going to put like a, some bricks and something in here just to bring this up a little bit. I want ventilation to get down into the tub here through these, through here, because that's the key to this too. It's just oxygen getting in there and breaking down the food for those worms. Okay. So we'll do a little update in a few days, but this is a start. And you always got to start somewhere. Now, as I put this together, um, let's just talk about what we can feed these and how much we can feed them. Uh, basically, things you can't feed them. Uh, anything dairy, can't feed them. Um, cheese, uh, milk, eggs. Now, eggshells, yes, uh, but not raw eggs. Um, no uh, fatty stuff and no citrus. Um, so, no lemon peels, no orange peels, no lime peels, that kind of thing. Um, but anything else, fruits, vegetables, um, I even thought I even saw you can put in like dryer lint if you want. Uh, of course, uh, like newspaper and brown bags, uh, those hard egg cartons, um, those work too. You just got to shred them real good. Um, if you've got a paper shredder, that's perfect to throw the stuff in first and break it down real fine so to convert that into bedding. Um, that'd be fine, but you're just putting it on top and basically keeping that moisture level up once you have the bedding established and you start adding food and adding food. Now, one thing I'm going to do probably after this, I haven't decided. I've got a third tote, so I've got one tote down here to catch the, the juice that's going to come down the bottom. The second one is where I've got the, my original bedding set up and the food in here. And then you can take a third one, you drill, make it like the second one, we have the holes in the bottom and then ventilation around the, pop, the top. And what you can do is this breaks down, put more bedding and more food in, and just pile this on top, and eventually the worms will make their way through the holes from the second container and to the third container. So you can do it that way, or we can just even leave it like this and just keep adding and adding and adding. So I'm gonna try it probably both ways. And eventually, they're gonna start having, having little little baby worms in here and it's going to getting bigger and bigger and bigger depending on how much food uh, we're f I'm planning on feeding these worms as much as they will take and the more you feed them 
Uh, the more one, you don't want to overfeed them, um, but as you do feed them, one, they're going to get bigger and they're going to eat more, and two, they're going to start propagating and having more babies, and which means more worms. So eventually, I'll take these thousand worms that I bought, uh, split those into two, and then I'll have probably one tote with uh, half the worms and one one tote with the second half. Now, uh, last thing I forgot to talk about was where I got these worms. I got them from a local person here down uh, in uh, a local person down here in Cyprus. Uh, he's on Craigslist, and he was very helpful when I went down. He explained to me what I can do, gave me some tips. Because as, as a first-time person doing this, I really don't have a whole lot of experience. Gave me a card, and with some other information for uh, where I can get more details and learn more about it. So he was very helpful. Um, Thousand worms for like twenty-five dollars, which is really good compared to what I found on uh, Craig's. And well, he was the only one on Craigslist. Uh, I believe you can get them on eBay. I believe you can probably even get them on Amazon, or you can just do a Google search and find someone. But twenty-five dollars for a thousand red wiggler worms is is a pretty good deal. So I'll put his information down below in the video. If you're local here in Southern California, you can give him a call and uh, stop by and get some worms from him and learn some stuff. Um, but again, this is kind of my first time doing this, and this is kind of a learning process for me, and hopefully it will be for you. And uh, let's, let's see what happens. And I'm sure I will have an update on this, uh, more than one update on this, and see how it's going and keep putting those on, on this site as well. So I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions or comments, please put those below. And please also be sure to subscribe and like these videos and share them as much as possible. Thanks.